From carpool to lunches to homework, there is a lot about school that can stress a parent out, but luckily it does not have to. Dana Lynn Condi joins me now with five or six ways to limit the stress in our lives right now, and it's something I feel like we're all feeling, not just the kids. Yeah, and we were just talking about if you started school before Labor Day and you got kind of adjusted, then we just had a three-day weekend, and it feels like we're doing it all over again. It throws you right back yes. into that cycle. Yes, like, maybe, oh, wait, reset. Yeah, and maybe you geared up really well for that first week, and now you're like, now it's all falling apart because we're not maintaining these tools. How did you come up with the list that you're going to share today? Honestly, it's because I have a child out of the house and one still in the house, and so I've had hard mornings like every parent out there, and I've struggled to try to figure out for our family. So maybe some of the things we're going to talk about today you know, may not work with your kids because you don't have the same dynamic going mm -hmm. on, but maybe something will. Maybe something will, and yeah. you can take one or two or three, yeah. and if they right. work for you, great. Right. This one I know would work for myself because I've tried it before. You say have family meetings on Sunday night. Yeah, I call it the put the fires out before the fires happen. It doesn't mean by Wednesday something hasn't already changed, but, you know, get the family together, have one calendar, and say, you know, Johnny has to be at soccer, and Susie has to be at piano. And so how are we going to handle that? How so, are we coordinating? Yeah, I, I just think if everyone kind of knows where the ship is trying to go, <laughs> then it helps to not hit the iceberg. Um, how do you get your kids to join in on these meetings? Is it a struggle to say, all right, it's time for our little weekly council? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust out my kit that's in Africa, so he <laughs> won't hear this for a few more months. But we do a little agenda that the kids can put in their locker so they know. It was a bomb and a paper airplane most of the time. And then right before he left home, one day he said, oh, on Wednesday, don't we have a something? The agenda said it. I almost fell over. I was like, what? Yeah, wait, what? <laughs> so we've been doing it for like 11, 12, 13 years, and it finally clicked. So repetition. Is yeah, key. just keep and doing just it. Consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you also say to prep the night before and then yeah. get up before the kids, which yes. is hard. <laughs> it is hard. It is hard, especially if you have like a newborn baby and you have school-age kids. But whatever you can do the night before, so get the homework out, gather the lunches, just put everything in one location so that people are ready because the morning you never feel like you have enough time. I agree. Yeah. I find that yeah. on this show all the time. I'm running in late half the time. Yeah. If I would have prepped a little bit more the night before, I just would have right. been a little bit less stressed and out. And the right. next one kind of goes with that Right one. along in that. Yeah. Get enough sleep. Yeah, and I think that's for everybody. If you're going to try to get up 10 minutes before your family, then that means you need to get enough sleep. And sometimes as parents, we want to burn the candle at both ends because we're trying to get things done when the kids finally go to bed. So, Do you have a set hard bedtime at your house? Well, <laughs> my daughter's <laughs> rolling her eyes. She's like, we say that every time and then we never do it. So, I mean, I think we have had to adjust and we only have one right now. So, I think that's the other hard thing is sometimes you have older and youngers and you have to adjust. So, You also say it's important to look for signs of stress because every child is different. Right. And what are some of those signs? So, I think um, some of the classics are stomach aches, headaches, is everyone fighting in your family all the time? So the stress isn't just with your kids. And and sometimes you have kids that are like, I don't want to go to school and I don't feel good. But if you see a change of what is normal, then realize that maybe that leads to our next one. You need to start scheduling some downtime. Because summertime was a whole bunch of downtime. It was, you know, we can get up when we want, we can go to the pool today, we can stay up late and watch a movie, and then all of a sudden, in a matter of moments, you're back to school, and your kids may need that downtime. So can you schedule that? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, we just want to exercise patience throughout the process right. because we all are human and we're all just doing our best here. So I think that's important, especially for me because I am not a patient person. Yeah. But um, you can go to Gainalyn's website, which is simply gainalyn.com. And that's where she will share these tips and other information as well. Thank you, Gainalyn, for welcome. coming. Be patient. It's adjustment time, and transition is always stressful. And for with everyone. yourself as well. Yeah, right? For sure. For sure, because I think the parents are trying to drive the ship, and, and we want to jump off the ship sometimes. Cause we're, <laughs> jump we're, off, jump out. Nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. <laughs> we're going to jump into what's coming up next. And still ahead, we're going to talk about some of the symptoms that a lot of people may be feeling out there. One of our viewers actually realized they've